Thank you. We go to consent agenda number four, the council minutes of March 15th, 2021, regular right meeting, recommendation approved. So moved. Support. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, let's go to the public hearing. We'll open a public hearing on the vacation of Christian B. Haas Drive. Mr. Rosen, you want to? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, um, this evening we have a public hearing for the proposed vacation of Christian, a, a portion of Christian B. Haas Drive, as shown in the plat of the St. Clair Industrial Park. Uh, Magna Electric Vehicle Structures, the company moving into the industrial park, is seeking to vacate um, a portion of the roadway from the, uh, essentially every side of the road that they own both sides of that would be the portion that would be vacated still working on a few easements and other necessary paperwork to get a resolution to you um, but we uh, have gone ahead authorizing this public hearing so we're here to now have the public hearing we can take public comments but no other action will be taken um, tonight on this matter all right I'll open the public any questions concerns All right, then I will close the public hearing and move to six. All right, that is our audit presentation. Um, this evening we're joined by Jordan Smith of Maynard Kasterison. Um, they are our auditors. Um, Jordan, we haven't done a uh, sound check yet, so why don't you uh, just un unmute yourself and say hi, and if I gotta change the volume in this room, I can do so. Hello, uh, I'm Jordan Smith. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try to present my screen or share my screen, and we'll see how it works. Um, I'd like to present my financial or the financial statements if possible. So. Um, see if this works. Hopefully, you can see a city of St. Clair year end September 30, 2020. Yes. Wonderful. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, I don't know if that's my I'll just go with it. <clears throat> my name is Jordan Smith. Um, I've been one of the lead auditors on the city's audit for the past four or five years. Um, and I need to thank Warren and Amy very much for all the help this year, and the rest of the city staff, but those two, um, Jessica as well, all three of them did great as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they were wonderful to work with, and they provided all the information we need, which was a little more difficult this year than in the past, thanks to the wonderful social environment we're in. So, um, yes, I'm being facetious there. Uh, so either way, I need to thank you all. Thank you, Warren, Amy, Jessica. I don't know if everyone's there or Warren, but thank you, thank you, thank you. It was really appreciated on our end. Um, I'm going to cover a few things for the audit. I'm going to focus on the general fund, talk to you about, a little bit about the comments we had. If there's any questions, please interrupt or get Warren to interrupt me somehow, please. Um, I'd appreciate it because I would like to answer everything as they come as much as I can. I know Amy, Jessica, Warren, they can answer things a lot better than I can. They're there the day in, day out. But we review things and, um, for reasonableness, and that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, the audit objective, the audit objective or purpose of an audit is to express opinions on the financial statements. Purpose is not to detect fraud or express an opinion on your internal control. I won't read the whole presentation, but these parts I want to stand out. Um, it is a miscommunication, uh, but uh, our job is not to detect fraud. It's for giving an opinion on internal controls. If we know something, we'll tell you, and we've got one or two findings in the, at the end with our items, but our job is to give, uh, to express an opinion on the financial statements and the reliability of that. Um, management's responsibility at the city is the preparation and fair presentation of these financial statements in accordance with GAAP as generally accepted accounting principles. Um, that includes the design, implementation, and maintenance of internal controls, which uh, we believe looked reasonable, even though that wasn't, that's not the point of the audit, we do look at those. Um, management's also responsible for fraud detection, deterrence, and prevention. Um, auditor's responsibility is to express opinions on the financial statements based on our audit. 
Uh, so this will be, this is considered a clean, unmodified opinion, all in accordance with GAAP. You can see down here, in our opinion, the financial statements prepared, present fairly in all material respects. That's right now the opinion paragraph in the audit, and um, it's the best possible opinion you can get. Uh, almost kind of a no news, good news type thing. I, we have a few minor findings at the end I'll talk about, but um, overall, very, very clean, very, very nice. <clears throat> Talking to the numbers, this is page 14 in front of, inside the financial thing, and I'll just guess you. Uh, this is as of September 30, 2020. Uh, the general fund financial statements, which is your general, your main operating fund. So I'm going to talk, focus on this a little bit. Um, one of the things, we look at a bunch of these numbers, but one thing we look at during the year is this on a sign I highlight down there, on a sign fund balance, just over $3 million. One of the ways we look at this is we compare that to your annual expenditures. What expenses, what expenditures were there in the general fund for the 12 months ended September 30, 2020? Um, that was about 4.6 million for the year. So that on a sign, whatever the city council would like to be used for, divided by the um, annual expenditures and other financing uh, uses, so what was transferred to other funds for use, um, that comes out to about 65%. So the thought process there, one of the thought processes, if the city were not taking another dime as after 930, 2020, you could operate for about 65% of the year. If all your, you liquidate your cash or you spend all your cash, you're able to liquidate your, liquidate your receivables, pay all your bills and everything, but you still operate for about 65% of the year at the same basis. <clears throat> um, going to page 17, this is the statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in fund balance for the year ended 93.1. .1. So the 12 months ended. I could tell you, everyone's been around um, the pandemic that's going on right now. That's the reason for majority of the change. I'm going to try to get a little bit more in depth and tell you a little bit more of the reasons. But really, that is why the revenues were down and expenditures were up. Somewhat. Expenditures would be down except for there's another expense. I'll talk to that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> revenues were down overall. And one of the big reasons was um, you didn't have the donations during the year. Um, <clears throat> last year, there was a lot of contributions to the city for the new playground that was installed in 2019. Um, over $100,000. You also didn't have all the programs all summer going on at the city. So license and permits, charge for services, and then the other contributions for that new playground in 2019, all those declined. So in the end, revenues were down about $260,000 or 5%. 2020, 20, compared to um, 2019. Expenditures down here, also highlighted, 3.7 million for the year ended 2020, 9-30-2020. Um, that's actually up about $237,000 from 2019. Recreation expense, again, you didn't have the programs put on, so our recreation culture, not recreation expense, I'm, I apologize. Recreation culture was down a little over $100,000 because of that, the expenses according. But that other rec expenditures you see right here, that includes 550,000 in contributions to your OPEB trust fund that was open during the year. <clears throat> so overall, well, total expenditures were down, or I'm sorry, were up 237,000. 550,000 of the 3.7 million can be directly attributed to OPEB and a contribution to the trust to offset those other liabilities. Um, <clears throat> scrolling down here, this net change in fund balance, yes, it was a drop during the year. Last year, uh, fund balance decreased about 74,000. This year, it decreased about 38,000. Um, it's less than 1%. So you never want it to decrease, don't get me wrong. But at less than 1%, it's very, very minimal, at least from an overall auditing standpoint. And the city, I would tell you, the city looks healthy. Um, specific change was 0.82%. So, 
Um, there's these graphs I want to show here. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. So this graph, if you can see it, kind of just shows uh, blue would be your revenue, red would be your expenditures, and green would be fund balance. Showing the increases, decreases year over year. So you can see revenues have gone up, but expenses have gone up too compared to 16, 17, 18 um, year over year. So it's just a different view. Another view that people often like seeing is um, high graphs. So let me zoom in on revenues first of all. So you can see revenues and other financing sources there. So other financing sources would be any transfers from other funds to um, pay for something originally paid for the general fund. Um, so taxes still make up majority of the revenue of the city. No surprise there. Um, with the change here, uh, taxes, percentage of the city's overall income is up about 5%. And intergovernmental revenue is up about 4%. Uh, so taxes and intergovernmental revenues significantly more. Uh, expenditures, down below, um, you can see here, no major change overall. Uh, general government's a little bit more because the pandemic and other things had to go. It really was a decrease in the recreation and culture, um, about two, three percent from the year over, which increased most of the general government. Uh, I wanna talk about findings. So, um, this is our report, it's often called a management letter or a letter on internal controls. Um, like I mentioned a few times already, this is not the point of the audit, the opinion on internal control, but as we know, it's stuff we're required to bring to the city council's attention. So, I'm bringing it to your attention. Material journal entries, uh, we've had this finding in the past, it's nothing new, um, we had it last year too. Uh, this all had to do with the net pension liability and net OPEB liability. Uh, talking with Amy, and the audit was being filed and everything, uh, she thinks she can record all this last year, and I would agree with her. It should not be an issue that way, so uh, everything should be recorded and it would go next year, and I'm not expecting to see this. Um, also, there's the fund equity deficit. Um, Amy and Warren said they have a plan to remove this. Um, but the municipal golf course was, was in a deficit as of 9.30.20. So, um, but my understanding is there's a deficit elimination plan filed with the state, and it should be gone by the end of this year 2021. Is there any questions? I'm going to stop there on my screen, but are there any questions or anything I can try to answer? Your Honor, if I may. Yes. Um, you mentioned earlier that there, uh, our revenue was down 5%. You, put a, you kind of put a percentage on that, and you didn't put a percentage on expenses. What, what, were, what was that percentage? What would that equate to? Expenses were up 7% overall, but we realized 550000 of that was a contribution to the trust fund. So um, I should probably back that out real quick, and I can tell you. So if you back that up, that uh, one county contribution of 550,000 to OPEB trust fund, uh, expenditures were actually down about 8%. So revenue was down five and expenditures were down 8%. Um, everyone knows largely related to the pandemic. So um, just the activities that went on were not the same. So a, a follow up to that would be that in 2019 we had a huge campaign to redo Greg Park. And most of that, I think almost 100% of that was done through contributions, wasn't it? Contributions and foundation expenses. I don't think the city had any out of pocket that I remember or recall. Am I wrong or right um, out of the budget? That was just on the beginning of my time. Well, I do believe it. Um, I think it's very safe to say in a public meeting right now, I'm thinking 85 to 90% was covered by okay. external the point of the, the point of my question would be, um, why would we, why would that be included in overall revenue when it was a, when it's basically a one-time, it was a one-time project where fundraising was done um, from outside sources? Um, 
doesn't that kind of skew the total revenue um, uh, year over year if we're trying to compare 21 to 22 or 20 to 21 that 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 revenue source really wasn't collected through taxes it was done through through in-kind donations and other donations that the city really had nothing to do with it. My, my, I guess my question is, why would we include that in revenue? Um, if I heard the question correctly, was why are like one-time revenues, such as contributions to the playground and other stuff, why are those included in revenue? Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna say that's gap, that it's required that all contributions, even one-time things are required to be contributed like that. And if it's not an ongoing, continuous uh, revenue cycle, then it's required to be part of the general operating fund. It's a one-time donation. Take that one thing with the general operating, uh, which is why there's that um, change, as you said. And it does, looking at year over year, does look a little odd. Um, but that would be a significant reason for patrons. Uh, my numbers show about 195,000. Uh, 252,000 decrease was related to that playground donation Thank you. Jordan. Yes. When over the years we've talked about our strong fund balance, and I think, can you tell me what it was last year as a percentage? Yeah. 46% uh, of your annual expenditures was an on-assigned fund balance in at 930 19 it's 65% at 930-2020. Okay, but when we were, uh, uh, when I was in some meetings with some uh, negotiators, they were saying that our fund balance was like 135%. Is that, is that a different number? It, um, they probably were not including your other financing sources and uses. So your other financing um, uses is the dollars general fund contributes to other funds to support them in some way, shape, or form. Um, I'm trying to think of an easy example. Jordan, not if I may, um, uh, and I, because I've been in some of these meetings with Bill, um, yep. when we talk about that 100% number, we're talking about the total fund balance, including the assigned portion. When you, if you add that okay. assigned portion in, that's what. Um, you know, that's when the fund balance, though, obviously, is much greater. Again, assigned is not the same as a committed fund balance or those other restrictions, but that's, you know, when we talk about that 100% level, we're lumping in, you know, assigned, because ultimately, I believe assigned is, you know, an act of council can redesignate those funds. In, in this, yes. Um, in this case, your assigned is largely uh, funds set aside for OPEB or capital projects. Um, that the city council has done at some point for management. Such as our um, trail were, money for Clinton Avenue. If you were to include that at 930-2020, it'd be 94%. Um, GFOA, by the way, the unassigned number, so not including the assigned. Uh, Government Finance Office Association recommends two months of operating expenditures be in that unassigned, give or take significant expenses uh, that you're planning projects and then um, when you bring in revenue, but roughly two months, which is about 17%. Um, we, I usually try to say 20% to be conservative. The city's at about 65 um, for just unassigned fund balance, not including the assigned. So with assigned and unassigned, we're at 94? That's what I just quickly calculated, yes. And what, do you know what, remember what we were last year? I thought last year I, you guys said we were like 130. Let me, um, yes, last year, um, according to the notes I have, which still presented, but last year was about 132%. Okay, can you tell me how we went from 132 to 94, just in a, yep. in, one, um, in one sentence or less? <laughs> we spent the it. The assigned fund balance is about half of what it previously was. Partly because of the contribution to the OPEC trust. All right, that makes sense. Again, we had a five hundred and fifty thousand dollars sitting in a call of assigned fund balance. We took that out to open up a new fund. So again, we took out five hundred fifty thousand. We still have it. It's there to pay for future benefits. But when you look at <coughs> when you just look at simple numbers like this, that you know that's kind of where that difference came from. Because that money used to be a, a you know, part of the general fund, essentially. 
Go ahead, Jordan. Are you done? Uh, that's my presentation. That's everything. So if I get other questions, I can answer them. Not if I have other questions. If there are other questions, I can let me answer them. All right. You know, I don't know. I just have a question about the golf course. I mean, in the past, I've been told that the golf course is an enterprise fund, but you're saying that it's not? No, it is an enterprise fund. The golf um, course has a deficit. Right. So, enterprise fund, um, I don't know why exactly. Either the fees aren't high enough, the costs are too much, whatever reason. It's currently been in a deficit for a couple of years or a number of years. Um, and that's all I was saying as far as that goes. Yeah, I got one. What was the deficit in the golf course last year? You're asking for the dollar amount? Yeah. Uh, dollar amount at 930 2020. The deficit was, let me find it here for you. I have it at my fingertips, I just gotta pull it up. So the golf courts had, as according to the state, the golf course deficit was $15,384. So there, the golf course has as capital assets of over 500,000. So the, the equity, the net position looks positive at about 489,000, a little bit more. But the unrestricted portion, the the assets, current assets or current liabilities basically, is a deficit of $15,383. So that's what the state looks at. <clears throat> On page seven of the uh, the audit and Jordan this might be something that's not really for you but the second paragraph in the bottom the the unrestricted net position of the sewer fund uh, amounting to a negative two hundred and eighty one thousand dollars I don't know if that's something for us to discuss here but ending up with a, a balance that decreased by twenty thousand six hundred dollars over the course of the year and can you tell me how that what what is what's causing that year-to-year -year loss in the sewer fund do we know that Warren, um, I can't tell you off the top of my head. I can try to look it up. I think, Warren, is that what's related to the township as well? I don't know for certain. You might be able to tell me. I know you guys had some adjustments that went into the water sewer, but I can tell you which one exactly with the township. Um, no, that, that wouldn't be it. Um, and I, I don't have last year's numbers, but I think our sewer fund cash position actually maybe increased like with when i just wanted to point out when 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 you read unrestricted net position that doesn't just mean cash balance correct jordan correct okay unrestricted does not just include cash um that unrestricted is basically everything less capital assets net of related debt um, so your assets, minus your liabilities, and then anything that's restricted by an outside source. So um, there's about $390,000 that's restricted um, by an outside source. And I'm trying to see if I can... Pretty sure that's here exactly payment. Where it is made up of. I'm just got to find it. Oh, it's, it's, it's restricted by... Um, uh, the city was required to set aside money for asset replacement in accordance with guidance from the USDA when there's a loan obtained. And so there's 390000 that's been set aside for replacement of sewer assets. <coughs> so that's restricted. So the deficit, the unrestricted deficit of 200 and I think I'm going to say 86000 because they got to pull it back up. 81. Um, but that sewer amount there, <coughs> that's basically it's your assets over your liabilities um the state is okay with that i'm not saying it's correct because you never want to deficit in any way but um the state says as long as your total current assets are more than your current liabilities they're not worried about a deficit unrestricted net position 
which the sewer is in. The water is too, and, but again, current assets are more than current liabilities, so the state isn't worried as far as that's concerned. Okay. And that's why we do not comment on it in our audit, just the municipal golf fund. Yeah, thank you. So Jordan, if I ask you, what's the total cash in our sewer fund? Is it, is it over $600,000? Uh, according at 930 2020, uh, it was about 1.47 uh, million in the sewer. And what about water? Water, uh, the audit shows 753,000. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Public, anybody? Mr. Laporte, you okay over there? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you crunch numbers a lot, I assume. Looks good. Right. I'm doing well. Things are really good on my side. Um, I actually prefer to be presenting to the board, or the city council, not board, in person, but um, I also want to be safe as everyone else does, so not crowd the room. Next year, I'm hoping to be there with you. All right, I guess, uh, thank you, Jordan. Good job. Glad to be sure. All right, let's move to number seven. A, ordered the document 21 Appendix B, Sinclair Industrial Park Regulations. Is that you? Yeah, I can take this one. Uh, again, last meeting we introduced an ordinance that uh, essentially takes uh, what has long been the listed uses for you know how to what you can use property for in the St. Clair Industrial Park that were developed jointly between the township and the city uh, 20 years ago. It takes all of that list and makes it uh, match and incorporated into our zoning ordinance, you know, giving it the full force of a zoning ordinance, you know, and all types of legal things. Uh, it's really a housekeeping thing. It probably should have been done a long time ago. Um, but again, with the little activity in the last 20 years in the park until now, it was one of those things that we just had to make sure that, you know, when the Planning Commission is you now has approved these things and if there's, you know, site plan stuff in the future, we wanted to make sure that what we've been marketing for in the industrial park matches what's in our zoning ordinance. So, and what this does, it rolls in the independent ordinance that the industrial park had at one time, and then now everybody rolled into the city, our city ordinances. So it won't have its own set of of uh, ordinances out there. And you could probably answer that one better than I can. <laughs> yes, Councilmember McCarty, the, the issue, as Mr. Rothy hinted, is that it was it's conceivable, although unlikely, that um, somebody in the industrial park could meet the uh, land use regulations and development standards and yet run afoul of the city uh, zoning ordinance or vice versa. In other words, it could pass city muster but would, would not meet the requirements of the, uh, of the um, jointly crafted <coughs> land use regulations and site development standards. So what we're doing is, uh, is simply making that harmonious by adding uh, a section uh, to the permitted uses section of Article 4 of the zoning ordinance to incorporate those, so it will become, in fact, a part of the zoning ordinance itself. So the township agreement that we have in place with them, that doesn't affect that at all? No, no, the, the, that uh, agreement uh, resulted in the creation of these standards. Okay. And we're simply uh, making them a part of our zoning ordinance at this time. Good. Motion to approve. Support. Any questions? I call the roll, please. McCartney? Yes. Bolt? Yes. Kinsider? Yes. Cleman? Yes. Koopa? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Cedar? Yes. Ordinance adopted, Your Honor. Right, thank you. Let's go ahead and be. Resolution 2112, local state of emergency. Mr. Down. Your Honor, uh, four councils have proposed resolution declaring a, a local state of emergency uh, concerning the, the pandemic. Um, is, uh, I think members of council are aware of the state legislature amended the Open Meetings Act to permit electronic meetings during the pandemic, but the, the amendment itself had a sunset date of uh, last week on, uh, on March 30th, the, um, the amendment expired. So in order to continue 
to conduct uh, uh, electronic meetings, there has to be a declaration of a local emergency. Many communities around the state are um, are doing that. In fact, uh, the resolution you're looking at is uh, is uh, roughly a template or my knockoff of a template that the Michigan Municipal League put together for its its constituent members. Um, the the preamble. Uh, contains language from the uh, state's director of uh, health and human services, as well as um, some uh, citations of a, a health alert given by our uh, Dr. Annette Mercantant, the director of public health here in, the, in St. Clair County. Um, if uh, the uh, resolution is adopted, it w and it, it can be adopted on the basis of three uh, state statutory authorities: the Home Rule Cities Act, the um, the Open Meetings Act, and the Emergency Management Act. If if uh, this resolution were adopted, then the city would have the option at its discretion to conduct city council meetings or any other administrative board meetings uh, remotely uh, during the time of the state of emergency. Motion to approve. Support. Make motions made support a question. I do have a question. Is, is, are we, has the city of St. Clair been declared a state of emergency? That, that's what the question I mean, I mean, You're asking us to declare the city of St. Clair a state of emergency. A state of emergency. Based on what? On the findings of the state's public health so director and the so county has, health director. So has COVID, has COVID, the infection, has it spread that big in the city of St. Clair? That, because I, I probably follow this strict and as sternly as anybody does, and I haven't heard anything that anyone within the city of St. Clair or a group of people within the city of St. Clair have come down with COVID. So I'm trying to question why we're to pass a state, I mean, I understand if we wanna, if we wanna form an a, 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 a agreement to have, allow our commissions and committees to have Zoom meetings or, or meet not in person, but I, I, why would we need to declare a state of emergency when I don't think one exists in the city of St. Clair? And if I'm wrong, please someone tell me. So, I mean, I, I can see if we want to support something like that, that's fine, but I don't, I, I've not been told of or have, have read anywhere that, that our community should be declared a state of emergency. I just yeah. think the wording is wrong. Is it any significant that the St. Clair County Board Commissioners already declared St. Clair County a state of emergency? Uh, I, I suppose anecdotally it might go to the, the question that, that Council Member McCartney's posed, but in order for the city to um, enact a um, uh, electronic meeting uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, it, the city would have to make that determination on its own independently. See, so yeah, and I guess what the county did. And I guess I'm, well, but we're locally elected officials that, that manage, make decisions, and, and uh, make law by the two <clears throat> ordinances. We have an administration, we have a city manager, and I don't, I don't know that we would have to comply with what the county does. I mean, if we're, if, unless we're just going to roll over, roll ever, not, not have an elected body to make these decisions, I'm not arguing that we have to, that we shouldn't create some type of rule that allows for us to have Zoom meetings. The state of emergency is a little bit strong language, in my my opinion. And like I said, I'm 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 open and um, open-minded enough to listen to if I'm wrong. Uh, if this is helpful, Councilmember. The uh, you. Uh, indicate that you'd be open to uh, a, the suggestion of how we might be able to uh, conduct electronic meetings. Then this is the device by which that would occur. Pretty strong language though, I think. State of emergency. I mean, it's pretty strong language to me, Jim. And I, I, I say I, I, I don't like the language portion of it. I just don't. Those, and, and those are the exceptions that have been uh, cut out of those statutes I mentioned that would enable the city to uh, conduct meetings remotely. Right, there's a motion based for Mm -hmm. Is the mayor a question? Let's call the roll, please. Bowles? Yes. Kinsmatter? Yes. Kleeman? Yes. Bufa? Yes. Support? Yes. McCartney? No. Cedar? Yes. Carriage, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Downey. 
Fourth administration, Mr. Wilson, De- we got uh, a, few, a few announcements, you're right. Uh, mayor, members of council. First, I want to say that uh, yard waste uh, from waste management begun uh, last Thursday, collection day. That's going to continue. So if you have yard waste, feel free to put that out. Um, two things you may have seen our DPW department working on the last few days and weeks uh, was catch basin cleaning and hydrant flushing. I just want to take the moment to say that um, hydrant flushing is kind of referred to, you know, by Eagle or, you know, if you go to the classes, you know, you, our staff has to get licensed. Um, hydrant flushing is just, it's an exercise. Much like, you know, a doctor's going to say, you got to exercise, you know, 30 minutes a day. Hydrant flushing is how we exercise our system. We check our hydrants, make sure they're working. We turn some valves, make sure those are working. We get the water circulating. So uh, I know it might not look like much is going on when, you know, water is coming out of a hydrant. It's one of the most critical things we can do to maintain our water transmission system. Um, the second thing, uh, catch basin cleaning, I wanted to point out that uh, we are required under our uh, stormwater discharge permit to do clean all our catch basins on a regular basis. So we've been going around and we're trying to do about a quarter of them in the city each year. And this year we've, been, we've met that target already. Um, so you know, we can kind of completely turn over a catch basin system every four years. Um, so I wanted to report on that. Uh, also wanted to say that within the states, the special assessment district that those bids were posted uh, this morning. Bid opening will be later this month. We're hoping to have a bid award and the finalize the special assessment process in May. Uh, 6.15 p.m. next council meeting. So before the council meeting at 6.15 p.m. we're gonna have a workshop where the MML will be presenting the findings from their compensation and job description study. So please mark your calendars, 6.15 p.m. April 19th. Uh, MDOT met last week to go over the application for Carney Drive that we submitted. Um, there's a lengthy internal review process. This was just part one, but we're hoping to figure here if we have been awarded that grant um, in mid-May. So uh, that's a few weeks away. Uh, otherwise, uh, I would also like to report that our uh, Thomas Luckenhoff, our new code enforcement officer, he has started with the city, um, and uh, we're well excited to have him on board, and he's been getting acclimated last week, and will continue to do so. So with that, that concludes my report for this evening. Any questions for Mr. Rolfe tonight? Yeah, I got one. A few meetings back, Ms. McCartney asked about crack sealing schedule. Uh, we're gonna get that soon? Yes, uh, I know that the order for the crack sealing materials was just placed after that comment, um, I don't have a schedule to do that at this time. And what about a sidewalk replacement schedule? Can you come up with something with what's going to be replaced this year? Yeah, we're, we uh, we focused on Ward 1 last year, sidewalk places. We've already been go out trying to identify some places in uh, Ward 2 this year, just kind of you know, going down, um, and uh, that works on going. Yeah, you say when you get a list, I would appreciate the list of all. Crack seal on that sidewalk replacement. All right, anybody else? Uh, Mr. Don, you got anything else? I have nothing this evening, Your Honor. You city department? Yes, Your Honor. On behalf of the Cemetery Board of Trustees, I'd like to thank Councilmember McCartney for your time on this board. To name a few of the projects that we're especially proud of, regarding Hillside Cemetery include the paving of Hillside Avenue, the yearly Headstone Monument Repair Project going on its fourth year, the 2019 Community Cleanup, and the new columbarium unit expected to be installed this fall. Please know that your time has been appreciated. And again, on behalf of the board, thank you for your representation and good luck to all you do. Thank you. Any other city departments? Authorities, boards, commissions, committees, council reps, anything? Unfinished business. A. 21-22 sewer lining program proposal, Corby Engineer Services Incorporated. Ryan? Good evening, everyone. Back on uh, February 24th, we received bids for the 2021-2022 sewer lining program. We received four bids. Corby Energy Services was the low bid at just under $229,000. There's two parts to the bid. The first part was actual locations that we've identified that needed to be lined. Some of those locations were supposed to be part of the program last year. We terminated that contract that Inland Waters Pollution Control was completing due to a lack of 
response, basically. So we terminated their contract and we've carried that work over into this year's program. There's also a couple other locations on Adams Street over by the water treatment plant, as well as on North Riverside Avenue that we have identified within the last few months that would be included in this project. So the quantities that are involved with that phase are actual quantities that we've determined based on cleaning and televising that were done. That, accounts, or that amounts to $179,339 of the bid. In addition to that, we also added some quantity in there for as needed sewer lining between this construction year and the next construction year, just in case we come across any emergency situations that might need immediate attention. In the past, I think when we've come across additional locations, we've had to come in front of council and get approval for each location. And if, if it's an emergency situation, we're looking to try to get that taken care of right away and not delay any further with going in front of council to get any additional approval. So we did add additional quantity to that, which accounted to 40, roughly $49,000. In the contract, we stated that that's not guaranteed. It's based upon the actual quantity that's done. So there, it's possible we might not come across any emergency situations within the next two years. We may not use that amount, and the contractor's aware of that. Um, so basically, together that counts to $228,984, and our recommendation is to award that to Corby Energy Services of Belleville, Michigan. How do you come up with the, <clears throat> how do you come up with the exact number of $49,645? Why don't you just say 50 grand? That's based on their bid. The, mm -hmm. It's the actual quant or the quantity that we put into the bid for additional work, multiplied by their unit price that they bid on. That's how we've come uh -oh. up with that total. I have a question for Jim. If if there is a emergency situation, does it always have to go? I mean, a, a true emergency does it have to go in front of council? Does it have to wait two weeks? Special no. meeting or time for a special meeting? Does it have to? I mean, or no, is there something in there that if it's an emergency, it's an emergency, take care of it and yes. get it done? Yes, it can be done. There's a provision in the, uh, in the code of ordinances that, yeah. that permits that. Is, is the 49000 is that more or less something to get them locked in on a price for the next That's year? That's basically what it is. I mean, basically. I'm good with that part of it. Yeah. I'm just not good with not coming, coming in front of council. Um, I don't know if we can separate that into two different things and, and vote on the 179 and then vote on the 49. Is that possible? You could. You could do that. You could award the $179,339 plus you could also bid it as, as needed services up to that amount, not to exceed the amount of 49000 and change. You and could do that, that as two as separate. Long as, as long as it's not an emergency, it does come in front of council. I'd be good Correct. That. And that emergency, obviously, between the city and our office, we would determine if it's an emergency situation right. that needs to be done, and we yeah. would have an inspector on site inspecting that work, quantifying that work to make sure that we're paying the exact amount. No, I understand that. So outside of an emergency situation, all the work that we're paying ahead of time for, essentially, would still come before council, is what you're saying? We would, we would see what that list is before any of it was completed, if it was outside of an emergency. Any, any further work that we come across that would need to be done in the future, that's not necessarily an emergency situation we would do in a, in a future mm -hmm. project that would be bid out and, and come that in front of $50,000 won't be used for that. Pardon? <clears throat> that $50,000 would not be used correct. for that. Correct. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Ryan. Help me out here. Have we done this in the past? We've built something, a cushion in? I don't believe the city of St. Clair has done that in the past. I have done that with other communities, but I think in the past St. Clair has always come, we've always come in front of you for contract modifications. I know on the last program, we, I think we were up to five contract modifications for additional work. So is this the sign of the future that henceforth when you guys come with a bid we're going to have the bid for the actual work and you're going to say put another 40 grand in there just in case that's the intent yes that's not it i think his question is is this going to be the sop for you know the way we do bids in the future based on you know the feedback i've received i would say no first i just don't understand why the forty nine thousand dollars is in there i mean i get what you're saying and why why but if he has the ability to spend the money under ordinance, if it's an emergency, then why do we even have this in here? Is it a, is it a money? Is it to, to pre-buy the, the, the lining material? Is that what you're trying to ask? Yeah, it cost yeah it's basically that. Just to, it's basically there to come up with a price. There's probably so a that, lot of home, buy, home builders now wish they'd have bought a lot of lumber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Time, right. So maybe this isn't a bad idea. But right. It, yeah, basically it's, trying to, it's trying to speed up the process to get any emergency work done. So does that mean we're still going to have the opportunity to review it, right? 
if the council wants to review the location, yeah, they, if, if you want to, you could. It's up to council if they want to review each location that comes up as an emergency situation, we can provide it to council. If we approve the 49,645, how long do we have? Is it a year on that? What's the? It's set up for a two year period for okay. this. It expires December 31st of 2022. So it'll cover this construction season and the next. So in other words, on previous projects like this, where they've had that money pre-funded for these things, and a project you know comes up to forty-eight thousand, do you go to? Have you gone to those local councils in those situations and presented, or is it just a just spend it and go? It's been, no, I don't. I have not gone in front of council with any emergency okay. situation. No, it's but if it goes forty-nine thousand six forty-six, one dollar over, you're coming. If it's over that amount, we would have to come in yeah. front of council. Yes. So then I think that administration better be watching the calendar if, if this gets approved right. tonight, come the end of the last couple months of 2022, then we better be getting that material and getting a refund, I guess is what is what you're saying. If we don't have anything come up that requires us to spend this money, then by the end of this contract, we better, better be getting that material in our, in our storage. So is this $49,000 lock Corby in? No, I mean, we, we may not spend any of that $49,000. It's on an as-needed basis. Yeah, but let's say a year and a half from now, we have an emergency, and we get to spend 20000 on that. Does it have to go to Corby since we awarded Corby? Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't like that either. Ryan, would you feel at all that we're putting ourselves at a disadvantage with the contractor because if the contractor knows we've approved an additional, let's call it fifty grand. Do we set the contractors out in the field and he's like, well, you know what? That thing's not terrible, but it's bad enough that we've got some cushion to work with. Let's replace that. And, I mean, I, I'm not the expert in this, but I think you are. Right. No, I mean, obviously we've cleaned and televised the locations that we've got in the contract now. We know what needs to be done. And there are other areas within those nearby, in nearby segments. There's other areas that have some deficiencies, but not to a severe extent. I mean, it's something we'd have to look at in the future. but. Uh, again, that would be between DPW and our office. If we come across any emergency situations, we would be looking at those to see if they're, if it's something that has to be done immediately or not. If it's something that doesn't need to be immediately done, we would just wait until the next program to do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm very comfortable with 179, but at the same time, I'm sitting here spending the taxpayers' money, and I'm saying basically we're, we're going to do it for 179. But if you need to spend another 50, go ahead. You don't have to come in. I think that leaves a lot of gray area for $50,000. Yeah, something like that. I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah, I don't like it. I like the 179. Well, actually, you're giving up the opportunity to lock in the price. But that would be any contract we do. We're going to do that. Yeah. If we buy a truck, we're going to say, should we add another ten grand in case we need it because the price could go up and we're lacking. What happens if the price falls? What if what happens if the price falls? Are we are we locked in at higher prices then? It basically, if we approve this, this would be the price for that program. Yes. I don't know. Fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money. Again, we might not come across any emergency situations. We may not spend any of that so money. So what it's happens to that money at, before the two years expires if we don't use it? They don't. You have it. We don't we spend it. it. It's only it's only the amount of work that they complete is, is what they get paid for. Is the city just banking that money then? We're just taking that money, setting it aside. We're not giving yeah. it to the contract. Yeah, correct. So yes. we have control of the dollar. That's correct. We don't have yes. So we're not giving that money. We don't have to spend any money. We're that. just authorizing. We're authorizing that contractor to hold. 2021 pricing correct for two years correct and we haven't we haven't we have that money hasn't transferred hands anywhere and it can't unless it's an emergency situation and I would believe that AEW is going to be coming in front of here and it's not going to be an arbitrary expense by anybody working for the city it's got to be approved by you guys yeah correct be approved by cops so it, correct yes I, I, I can see that I can see the, the reason for if it's going to save us three four five percent down the road and we don't have to give anybody any money well, yeah. Okay, let me ask you this, right? So it's forty nine six four five, and the contractor three months after the one seventy nine work is done, says, or whenever uh, we found this, and that forty nine isn't going to cover you, even though I priced you at that price. There's other stuff now. I need another ten grand. And it's not up to the contractor to make that determination. It's up to our office and or the city to to make the determination as to what any additional work might be. So and at I mean, this point, you're saying there's no additional work needed, just the 179. Correct. Yes, that's correct. 
So if we say there's a sinkhole that forms in the few, say a few months from now on a street, there's a sinkhole that forms over the sewer and we go in there to clean and televise that sewer and find that there's, you know, we've got multiple cracks and it can be lying, we can save that pipe before it actually collapses and we'd have to do a dig and we can get in there and do an emergency liner and we can go in and do that with the pricing that we have established now. <coughs> but couldn't you guys declare that an emergency and get it fixed without coming to council? That, I don't, that's up, I don't know what the, how the uh -huh. ordinance is written on that. I, I'm not sure I understand the question. Couldn't they declare that specific situation an emergency and not come to council and get it fixed? If there was a sinkhole over the sewer? I don't know if there's I, a I, dollar I, limit yeah, that I, I would so, have to. I, I don't know that, I'm, as I understand it, it it's uh, to adopt the, the contract as presented, we're gonna be locked into the, the pricing for this season. Mm -hmm. And if the emergency were declared a year from now, that, that would not be the case necessarily. If it's one emergency situation and you have to go out for quotes to a contractor, it may come in at a higher price right. because just one, you know, the more work you have set, set in this up. And this we're talking about, this isn't this isn't really part of the hundred and seventy nine thousand dollar project, and it's not like this company's going around looking on other roads for problems. Right. This is something right. that's going to come up if something happens. It's there. Right. We got them on reserve for this amount of money. Right. Correct. When we put the bridges out for Golf Street. Now that, there's a lot of work down there. Is there gonna be something like this for that? Not doing so not, not for Golf Street, no, there wouldn't be any. As far as, we usually put a 10% contingency into the contract for a road reconstruction project like that, we would usually put 10% contingency. Well, Golf Street is sewer and road, right? Correct, yes. Well, water. And, and water. water, yeah. Water. Sewer's not part. <laughs> yeah. But you know, in essence, Bill, there is. Anytime we send a bid all like that for major construction, there's always a 10% contingency. That's what I'm getting right. is, does the right. 179 have a contingency in it? This, it does not have a contingency on this be, just because we know the exact amount of work that needs to be done. Shouldn't there be a contingency in there anyways? Though? Pardon? Shouldn't there be a contingency in there anyways with any major project? At most projects, I would say yes. This one, because we know the exact quantity, we didn't put a contingency mm -hmm. into it. Okay, so... You guys are weird. Yeah, you guys are confident that 179 is going to cover this. Yes. So confident that you did not put a contingency in. Correct. Yes. But the 49 is somewhat of a contingency. You could say that. Yeah. For future. Yes. For future emergency work. Yes. Or for this project. Right. I got a question. Bill. 49,000 is for an emergency. Correct. The next two years. So a year and a half down the road, city gets an emergency. The bill for the emergency is 150,000. How do you come up with, how do you make up the other 100,000? We would have to come in front of council to is get that, additional. I mean, is that uh, the going rate or is? I, I don't see $150,000 in emergency saying, work, but if that, case, case, if that was the case, for example, if that was the case, if it's over the $49,000, we would have to come in front of council for addition, for approval over that amount. All right. Are we obliged to take the company that uh, has the, the current $49,000 to complete the project? You know, if there's a, I'm just another company no, wants to come if in. We approve that. Corby, Corby does it. Yeah. yeah nobody else if it's a hundred thousand dollar project and we're in for forty nine, are they? They know they got us, and so they can charge us whatever they want for the other. Just you know, it's just a thought. No, nah, not we would. It, we would issue a contract modification based on the unit pricing that's already established. Okay. That's why we have an engineer on staff for that, base, so you don't get taken advantage yeah. from contract. Right. Like yeah. That. I guess my question would be, uh, just the way things are going, especially as Member uh, McCartney said, with the prices of the building supplies, is it like with the lawn, we give them a two, three year contract? Is it possible to sit here and look at sewer projects multiple years and, and bid this out? You know, now when we know that's, I mean, we got a pretty good feeling things are going to be going up. We could lock them in this year for next year's work too. Yeah, I'm doing it this way. Yeah, we, we've actually we've been doing that a little bit more here in other communities too, especially on like your maintenance programs that's such what, as this concrete repairs and that. We've been doing two or three year programs just because of the price, especially the concrete and asphalt prices have been going up quite yeah. a bit. We've been Road trying to lock those a in. Bit. I mean, yeah. just a suggestion. Yeah, and we can get there with that. But what do you guys want to do about this tonight? I want to vote on the 179,339. Is that a motion? Yes. What's the motion? I'm sorry. To approve the 179,339 for the uh, contract. I'll support that. All right. The motion may support questions, comments. 
concerns? Are we going to have the opportunity to uh, approve the contract of uh, the, the other contingency, or no? If you want to. If, you, if this gets turned down. Or you'd need a second motion to approve the other, correct? Yeah, right. Just right. on this one, right. Okay. Anybody else questions? Okay, let's call the roll, please. Kiss this Potter? is to approve the 179, I'm sorry. Yes. All right. Kiss Potter? Yes. Cleman? Yes. Koopa? Yes. Laporte? Yes. McCartney? Yes. Bolt? Yes. Cedar? Yes. Carrie Drunner? Uh, make a motion to approve the contingency. I would, I would second that. The contingency of 49,645? Yes. That has to come in front of council? Yes. Okay. Unless it's proven as an emergency? Yes. Yeah, party motion? Yes. Right, is there support? I support it. All right, any questions? Any concerns, comment before we vote? I mean, I don't think we're out of any way. We're not, we're, we're keeping we the money. We're keeping the money. I mean, the money stays with us. So, I mean, yeah. if we can lock in prices and save some money, I mean, and, that's and, part, and, part and of what I, we just do. Just for full disclosure, I'm going to vote no because, I, you know, we've never done this like this. And I'm not saying that's just because we haven't done something, we shouldn't try something. Right. This is the people's money that we're talking about here, and we're giving money out to a contractor to say, basically, if you find something, fix it, and you want their... It's a built-in. It's a built-in contingency. But I don't think we're given. I don't think we're given the. I agree with you. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. I agree with you. I think if we don't have faith in our in the engineers that we hire to to oversee contractors that do our sewer, water, street work, and the money is staying here and it's not declared emergency, they're on the job. And if the, if we have a sewer line break and it's they're the, the first ones that are going to get a call besides Bob Beef is going to be AEW. But I have so much faith in our engineers that I believe that the 179 that they say is accurate is accurate. <laughs> <It's laughs> <exactly. laughs> One has nothing to do with the other. I think yeah. you're confusing the That's no, not at all. I don't think we should show our faith in the in taxpayers' dollars. I call the motion, Your Honor. Okay. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. All right. Call the roll, please. Cleman? Yes. Koopa? No. Laporte? Yes. McCartney? Yes. Bolts? Yes. Kinsvater? Yes. Cedar? No. Carry All right, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Yep, thank you. Go to new business, approve preliminary site plan, Woodland Estates Condominium, phase three through five. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, this evening we are seeking preliminary approval for Woodland Estates Condominium, phase three through five. This uh, item was, uh, uh, the motion was essentially a recommendation from the Planning Commission, unanimous recommendation. Um, that they granted preliminary approval for for this condominium development. Um, what your approval does tonight is essentially, you know, some, you know, it's just the next step in the process. There's still a multitude of uh, con conditions that have to be met by the applicants, which are listed in the memo I prepared. They were incorporated as part of the Planning Commission's motion. It's going to go back to planning for final approval from Planning Commission, and then it will go back to City Council for their final approval. So. Uh, uh, request for the action this evening is a motion to uh, you know, essentially accept the Planning Commission's recommendation with the included uh, conditions related to the proposed Woodland the State's condominium phases three, four, and five. So move, Your Honor. Support. Question? Yeah, I just have a question. Um, is this contractor um, going to have to give us a performance bond or a security deposit so we don't get into issues that would, we did with the other part of Woodlands? That is exactly why some of the motion, the conditions in there speak to things like that, including the execution of a public infrastructure development agreement and um, one of those planned um, things in the agreement would essentially incorporate that exact thing. I have a question. I think it's just a typo, but it says lot 78 across to the north, lot 35 for the uh, sidewalk. I don't see lot 78. Is it seven, is it meant to be 77? Possibly. Um, that uh, I didn't even notice that myself. Just something to check out. Mm -hmm. And then does this, when I'm looking at this, just, I know this is planning commission mm -hmm. area, but does this mean we're going to have 12 driveways coming from this subdivision into Kearney Drive, essentially, along that route now? Yes, if that's and they'll, they'll be sidewalked all the way, sidewalk and driveways all the way along there. Yes. Yes. Okay. I got a question, Bill. 
on the sidewalk. So I'm going to make him put a five foot sidewalk in. The ordinance calls for four. Laporte's here from planning. He can probably answer that better. We discussed it, but I don't remember. They wanted it because of um, the bike path. I I don't remember what the discussion and, was. Bill, I, and I can maybe help Mike out. In my old planning days, planning, planning's goal was to always try to increase the width of new sidewalks going in because just because of the way they're being used today versus what they were when the sidewalks were first put in. So I know it's never been brought up as an ordinance proposition to council, but I know that planning has always tried to get sidewalks to be wider than what they currently call for in the ordinance. So um, the contract, I know planning and the contractors agreed to this. Yes. Um, so I think it's a pretty good idea myself, even though I'm not going to be using the sidewalks too much anymore. <laughs> but I think well, it's I would a great just curious, idea. Don, well, you know, to say the ordinance states four and they're telling him he needs five. I think at some point in time we're going to, the city's going to have to address that just because of the way sidewalks are being used today. It's, if you walk any of them around town and you walk side by side and you're, you have a person coming towards you that's dog walking or pulling a stroke, pushing a stroke, you have to literally get off the sidewalk to let someone pass. And so I think that the forefoot is just old thinking myself. We have a motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's call the vote, please. Rufa? Yes. Laporte? Yes. McCartney? Yes. Bolt? Yes. Kinsbatter? Yes. Freeman? Yes. Cedar? Yes. Terry, John. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Item number 11 is Clayton to Council March 18, 25, April 1. Make a motion to approve as presented, Your Honor. S support. Motion may support. Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Number 12 is public comment. Anybody have anything non agenda? Three minutes if you have some comments, questions, concerns, anything on your mind? You can give us your name and address, please. Jeff Nagel, 1059 North Riverside. Just the emergency thing just prompted a question. The, uh, the Winter Festival was uh, pretty successful in this city. That was one hell of a weekend down there. Are there any numbers on attendance? Are there any numbers on, because of the vitriol that was going on, and I mean, everybody saw the heated language, is there any number of COVID cases that are attributed to that uh, that wing ding? I, I'm not aware of any numbers like that. Is there, is there a way to find out? Um, County Health Department, maybe? No. Yeah. Chamber might be able to help you as well. Too. I'll go there. Thank you. Can be out? Don't you have anything, Greg? Yeah, I do. I just didn't know if it was an appropriate time. To it's your time. You're out. Okay. Good evening, guys. Hi. Uh, my name is Greg Bozell. I don't reside in the city of St. Clair. I'm from uh, Contraville. And I came in front of you guys tonight to offer some help for the boat races. Um, I've got about 25 years in sales. I understand for the boat races to go on, uh, we need to uh, raise a significant amount of money. And I just wanted to offer my help if there's anything I can do. There's the man to talk to, right? Yep. Here. Well, we started a conversation. Mm -hmm. Council member and yourself, yep. and uh, you guys told me to come to the, the meeting tonight and, and and talk about it. I guess I'd like to know, you know, a little bit more background how you've uh, sold it in the past. <coughs> you know, uh, <coughs> what kind of people possibly that you have out there that you might be able, we might be able to call on. Uh, my intention would be to just do a lot of networking, call a lot of the businesses around, and just start uh, trying to figure out where we're at. Right. Right. I know that you know local restaurants have been hit, you know, really hard this year, obviously because of COVID. And I realized probably a lot of the funding for the boat races was through the restaurants. So, 
You're that might not be an avenue. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the Voyager. The Voyager, I know, still has a ton of money to spend. So we don't make much of the Voyager. steps up big. AEW and the Voyager are right there. Voyager are right there. Greg, yeah. we appreciate you really. And I, yeah. Butch and I have talked, and we want to talk to you. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll be yeah. talking. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Good. Okay. Um, let's go to number 13. We've got a couple of things. Um, let's do the housekeeping first. So, um, Monday, April 19th, our next meeting, we have a Michigan U Miss Williams workshop at 615. Correct. Right? By May 3rd, the May 3rd meeting, which is our first meeting in May, we need to appoint a representative to represent the second ward, as Mr. McCartney is, is uh, stepping down. Letters of interest are being accepted until April 16th at 4.30. So far we have four, correct? Correct. So now we need to figure out when do we want to do these interviews of at least four people who are showing interest. Um, I had thought we would do them on that 16th before the meeting, and but that was my fault, I forgot about the MML thing. So we've got a couple choices. We can schedule a, a special meeting for like uh, April 26th, or we can do it during the April 19th meeting, or any other ideas anybody has, throw them at me right now. Can we do a special meeting after the normal meeting? Do you say that again? Can we do a special meeting after our normal meeting? Let's do a special meeting after the meeting on the 19th? Mm -hmm. Can we do that? I'd rather do it the 26th, do the separate day. Separate. Then you're not rushed, you're not late. Yeah, I'd rather see it separated too. Mm -hmm. Fine with that. Okay. I'm open to anything now. Mm -hmm. Open to anything? You guys want to just say the 26th then? 26th it is. Sure. Uh, 6 o'clock? Fine. Mm -hmm. What, All right, day, what day is that? That's Monday. That's okay. Monday. Let me double check. On my phone here. It's Sunday. It is. 26th of the Monday. Okay, so we're going to say April 26th, 6 p.m., special meeting for the purpose of interviewing candidates. Uh, candidates you have until April 16th to get anything in letter wise to uh, Ms. Sturdy over here, our city clerk. This all sound copacetic, Jim? Yes. All right. Anybody else? Is everybody okay with that? Okay. Um, we don't need to make a motion on that or anything, do we? No. No. All right. Um, under, I guess there's nothing else. Well, I guess there might be one more thing. <laughs> Can I say a couple of things? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, there is one more thing before you come. Yeah, I just have a couple of things. Um, there's going to be a spaghetti benefit dinner for the knucklehead racing boat racing team. This Saturday, April 10th, from 4 to 8, at the St. Clair Knights of Columbus Hall. It's $12 per person. You pay at the door, and the proceeds go to support the cost for them to race this season. And then also, just to straighten out some confusion, after a recent press release that was made by FunFest, um, who uh, actually has the rights to Riverfest, they have canceled their event in St. Clair. And that uh, encases the bands and the uh, vendors that they bring in. Blue Water Offshore, who puts boat race on, they're still working on producing a race. It's, we're planning on July 30th, 31st, and 1st, and we are actively seeking funds. And thanks, Greg. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, any questions or anything about that? All right. Fundraiser Saturday, night to Columbus, Yeti dinner. Yes. Four races, we're working on it. They're yes. not canceled, we're working on it. Right. Okay. Okay. Now let's get to the most important thing about this whole meeting. <laughs> All right, so after 11 years, 11 years, Tom McCartney served as a, a city council member, and uh, you, no one that could ever accuse Tom of not being dedicated. He's certainly dedicated to the city of St. Clair, and you could never accuse him of not being hardworking. The guy served on everything from the cemetery Recreation, the DDA, the Planning Commission, the Library Commission, they kicked him off because he Can't only read. looked at pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Most important, the sign committee. The sign it's committee. Sign committee. Sign. The ever loving sign committee. Wow. <laughs> oh, so much year. support for the city. I'll never get back in my life. <laughs> <laughs> never get that back. <laughs> we, we are just very fortunate to have, to have had Tom here, and Tom's moving on to, a, to his bigger and brighter future uh, just north of us. So on behalf of the City of St. Clair and this council, 
This special tribute is presented to Thomas McCartney, city council member from 2010 to 2021. Wow. In recognition of his commitment to the city of St. Clair, his readiness to serve the citizens, his willingness to seek out the views of his fellow residents and apply them with genuine understanding of the community. Dated this fifth day of April, signed by William Cedar and myself. <laughs> If I may, um, I just have a few things I'd like to address. Um, first of all, it's been a pleasure, it's been an honor to serve the city of St. Clair, um, the taxpayers, it's a town I grew up in. Um, my family has has um, has worked for the city, we've, we've been special police officers. My brother and I were on the special police for about eight years before it disbanded. My dad was one of the founding members of it. Um, it's just it's just been my pleasure to to serve the citizens and to try to do for them what what they needed to have done and they didn't have maybe the voice to get it done. Um, but there's a couple requests that I have for council going forward to to work on. One of them is is to continue working on the M29 road diet. Um, as I travel back and forth to Point Huron, where we've leased a, a apartment. Um, I noticed that uh, the speed limit changes several times when you get close to the city. It goes from the 40 or 45 up through Marysville and South Park and it drops to 35 around the Bean, the Bean uh, Dock and then it drops to 25 just, just as you're approaching the city limits and it carries 25 miles an hour to the other end of Point Huron until it picks up at um, or the old Speed EQ gas station where Pine Grove actually picks up and takes over. Uh, I wish that the city would force MDOT to do that. It's a, it, and that is an MDOT highway. Um, I'm sure that the city had a big role in having that speed limit reduced, and I would hope that we could do something similar in St. Clair where we could get the speed limit down from the North City limits down to the South City limits and, um, and get that taken care of. I know that would please a lot of people, and especially the downtown area. The next thing I would, would ask the council to look at is um, a few meetings ago, the city manager announced, and I think AEW announced that the city of St. Clair is in line to receive um, some COVID money. And I made my feelings pretty well known that night of where I would like to see some of that money go, but um, another part of that money, I think we need to look at Cox Road in, in collaboration with the township and the East China School District, we need to have a sidewalk a lighted sidewalk between Vine Street and Clinton Avenue along Cox Road. If they're gonna build another school out there, it's been a dangerous trek for these kids every year running up and down Cox Road um, to get to school. And I think it's time that we we did something and we could, if we get the township and the school, the school needs to, to pony up as well. If that's an area they're gonna expand and build a school, they've gotta provide sidewalk and a safe way for these kids to get back and forth from school. So. That would have been something I would have wanted to champion and work on if I'd have stayed on council, but um, obviously f we took advantage of the of the um, real estate market. Um, couldn't find anything in St. Clair. I wanted to stay here. Both my wife and I did. Um, there just wasn't anything available that 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 would fit our needs, and we did find a nice loft up in Point Huron that we were real happy with and like. And um, um, so we're going to stay there for a year and hopefully we can find something like that in St. Clair if a developer comes in and does something like that in downtown. That, that's something we'd like to do, um, kind of be city dwellers and, and uh, have the walkability and things like that that we've always dreamed of in St. Clair. I mean, that's part of the, the whole development since DDA was formed back, back when I first got on planning was that we wanted, we wanted um, people to live downtown, we wanted you know, to have units downtown and things like that. So anyway, I appreciate everything that, that, that you guys have given me as well and, and working with you guys on council has been, it's been a privilege. I've grown up with most of you, but we've spent, a lot of you we've spent the full 11 years together on council and we've done a lot of good things and we've, um, we've got a good manager with us. We've got a great police chief. Um, Everybody that works with the city, I, I mean, our DPW is second to none. So um, I think we need to continue to build that and, and grow on that. And Annette, thank you for all your help as well. Appreciate everything you've done for me. 
and thank you. Good luck, Tom. Really relax. Take a deep breath. Well, I said I was going to be quiet tonight and not not be my normal boisterous self, I was, but I couldn't help it. I wanted to be like March, go in like a lamb and out like a lion. <laughs> so so I, I apologize to some of you that may not have appreciated my comments, but uh, thank you. All right. Okay. Um, any other council people have something? All right, I'm going to ask, I'm going to go to 14 and ask for a motion to go into closed session to confer with legal counsel for the purpose of discussing pending litigation. We're going to do the closed session here because that room is very small and just with all the everything that's going on, we don't, I'm just going to ask you guys if you want to meet in the lobby, come back and get you if you want to come back down. We might take action uh, when we come back out, we may not, but we'll come up and make sure if anybody's up there, we'll welcome you back. I'll Thank make you. the motion. Support. <laughs> okay. <laughs> motion may support it. Uh, call the roll, please. <laughs> Support? Yes. McCartney? Yes. Bolt? Yes. Ginsfather? Yes. Cleveland? Yes. Kuba? Yes. Cedar? Yes. Terry Jones. Thanks, everybody. Be careful out there.